Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys and welcome back to today's episode. I had a gentleman give me a call a few days ago, watched our YouTube episodes, and he had some antiques for sale, which he's brought in behind me, some collectibles and stuff, and we're going to go through those in a bit. But here's the interesting story. The fellow that I bought this from, um, he used to own an antique store here in town when I was a kid, and I used to go there and buy stuff, and I was recounting with him a time I went in, and he used to have little matchbox boxes for matchbox cars, and he just had a whole bunch of empty boxes. And um, as he pulls up to the, the store here and we're chatting, uh, I said, oh, I remember you from buying these little empty matchbox boxes. And I said, I'd go around to yard sales and garage sales and I'd find the cars, put them in the box. Um, and he said, well, funny story about that. Those little matchbox boxes uh, came from a store because the owner of the store would sell the car to the kid and then keep the box and throw it in the basement. And so over the years, 10, 15 years, uh, they had this big pile of boxes stashed. Well, when he pulled up, he told me that that store, that those matchbox toy boxes that I got when I was a kid was this store that I'm in right now, my own very store. So what are the odds of that? So here I am nearly, I would say 35 or 40 years later after I went into his shop buying little toy car boxes from the very store I would own as an adult years later. It's just crazy how the world works and things go in circles. But he came in today, um, brought me some cool stuff. So we're gonna go through that. But uh, how serendipitous that I would end up owning the store that uh, one of my first early childhood memories of collecting came from. Crazy. So what did I buy from this gentleman? Well, there was a, a large variety of collectibles. Now, when Melissa and I owned our shop back in the early to mid 2000s, which I guess we're kind of in the early to mid 2000s still. Anyway, when we owned it like 10, 15 years ago, we sold these types of Corgi toys. So these are collector's pieces. They're all limited edition. Um, but the ones you always want to look for are the uh, ones that were, you know, a little bit more obscure or had a history to it. So there's a Avro Lancaster. And these all have a lot of good history to them. What battle it was in, um, you know, really, really neat pieces and excellent quality. And you can really see the amazing detail on these kits from the little miniaturized logos and decals on the wing. You know, they're a fantastic piece uh, to display. Now, this one has been out of the box before, so I'm not the first guy to take it out of the box. A lot of people freaked out when I took one out of the box before. It is, however, a display piece, and it's meant to come out and be on display. But there's a nice little variety of them, so I'll kind of see what I got here, and then I'll have to go through the process of looking at what they're worth and repricing them. One of the really interesting things about what this gentleman brought in was that he focused on finding aircraft that were specific to either Canada or in this case, even my hometown of Edmonton. So this is a World War II de Havilland Mosquito um, from Royal Canadian Air Force, of course, but this is uh, based out of the city of Edmonton. So that's really, really unique. Um, this also, you might have recognized Buffalo Air. Um, the gentleman had a TV show, uh, Ice Pilots. That is from uh, our area as well. So we've got one of Buffalo Joe's aircraft in miniature here too. A couple of really unique local sort of pieces. I've got pretty well all the box Corgi aircraft off the counter, except this one. Um, this was sold at the um, Aviation Museum years ago. And it's of course an Avro Aero. Now, many Canadians are a little sore of the fact that our wondrous Avro Aero was um, parted out and the, went off to, a lot of the folks that worked on it went off to NASA. But amazing aircraft, very ahead of its day. Um, and it's really hard to find a die cast model of it. So it's kind of nice to get this piece in. I'm sure it will sell pretty quick. There's a lot of Avro Aero fans out there and not a lot of models of it. And at first glance, you might think this is just another die cast model. when in fact, it was made in Los Angeles and likely would have been sort of like a salesman sample or salesman display model 
of the B-52. A lot of times they gave these away to pilots, kids, or people who are in the aircraft industry. In fact, I've got a couple in the showcase there that came from the manufacturer. And the only reason that you get these things is if, if you were actually a pilot or involved in the program. So that is a much nicer piece than what I first expected. I thought it was gonna be just a regular die cast, but in fact, it's from the era of that aircraft and it's all made of aluminum, very, very nice. Now, aside from the planes, he said there were some other more vintage toys in these boxes. We're going to go through, and I'm not really sure exactly what's in here yet, so we're going to unpack some of these and see. He's told me he's in a train. Okay, well, this, isn't, this is not a train, but... Okay, I think I know what it is. This looks like a standard gauge Lionel... It is, yeah. It's this. That's a cool piece. That is the standard gauge Lionel City train station. A few standard is much bigger. Um, I've got that's a live steam standard engine back there. That's a lot fancier, more expensive than your average standard gauge set. But um, these are nice little accessories, and you could probably do a really cool diorama. Hopefully, there's some other stuff that old in here too. I'm going to keep digging through boxes. This box has kind of a variety. It is another airplane, not a super expensive one, but still a sellable thing. And we've got a control tower, like a little light tower here. That doesn't look to be standard scale. That might be more like, oh, it's pre-war though. It's an early number. And funny little wired brackets. Oh, those are um, lamp posts. But I don't think those are original to Lionel. I think somebody's made these probably for their layout, but that would look pretty cool. These all set up, these gooseneck style lamps set up. Okay, so we've got some lamps. Looks like this might be part of a layout that somebody had. And if they had a standard gauge layout, probably gonna be some other cool stuff in here too. What's this? Little tin electrified house. That's kind of cute. Lionel. That would be more O gauge, as you can see the difference in size right there. But that is an early O gauge accessory and it looks like it lights up too. It's pretty neat. I'm seeing there's a few little cars. And this is kind of neat. This is the Thunderbolt made by London Toy Company. That's out of Canada. So this is a Canadian made early toy car. I was wondering if they had it set up with their train set. And a little Shuko car. Or as I collect these, it looks like somebody's been in the back. The, the metal has come detached a little bit. I'll see if I can find a key if it works. These are kind of neat because um, this probably had a cable drive at one time, like a little remote control car with different gear selector for your speeds. Probably had a reverse on it too. I collect, I personally collect Shuko stuff, so I probably won't even leave that out. They usually had like a little house or something, like a little parking garage that went with it. Very similar in size to this, so if I'm lucky, I might find that in here too, because I see there's all sorts of other little buildings in there. And there is some really cool stuff in this box. This is the bell ringing Mark's train crossing and even have the original box. Look, it's like it's electrifying your child with the little lightning bolts out the side. And I can see there's all kinds of streamlined cars. I'm gonna have to piece this out. I'm gonna empty this box out on the counter and we'll have a look and see what there is. Here's a neat little streamliner. It almost looks like a Zeppelin. And this is another made in the USA. Can't quite see the brand name on it. Made in New York though. Really cool piece. Love that kind of style. This is some good early stuff in here. And digging through and check this out. This is a little train station set. All kinds of fun things. But I did find the little garage for the Shuko car. So see, it's got this little phone on here. That is meant to go with this, that's a set. So I do have the whole set. That's a really neat little piece. It would come, I think you would whistle, or I don't know if this is an Acoustico or Magnifico, but you would whistle or something. <laughs> Somebody watching is gonna correct me. I should probably have fact checked before I started recording, but oh well, here we are. Um, and the car would actually drive out, but really, really neat piece. Um, that'll probably come home with me just cause it's super cool. Yeah, I was looking at that torpedo car earlier. It's really, really neat. Can't, I couldn't see the brand name on the bottom. It's made in New York. Yeah. But look at this. This is standard gauge train cars. These are the big, yeah. these are the big guys. And that's original. They made reproductions of these, but this is the real deal. You can tell right away just the way it's built and the patina. 
the the type of screws, the way they put it together. That's a neat piece. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in these boxes. There's another one. It looks like the the bag or the mail car. If I'm lucky, I'll end up with the whole the whole set of these. Yeah. Well, all I'm missing is I'm missing the engine. Yeah, this is this is a neat piece. That's a real cool piece. I found the the one engine, two twenty was it two twenty nine? It's sort of a um, gunmetal gray, and then it would have had all these little tin cars went with it. So that's probably the whole set there. This person really liked their chocolate bars, and Baby Ruth, of course, named after uh, Baby Ruth. But some people, a lot of people, probably know that, but that is the case. Cool set, whistle tender. Always an upgraded feature on your train set to get the whistle tender. This is encouraging. This box has got some weight. Mark standard gauge. It's wrapped up nicely in newspaper. Yeah, there's an engine right there. 1835E. That looks like another train car. Yeah, there's a whole, I think I got the whole set here. I've got this big pile of Lionel trains piling up here and I had this piece and I was hoping the rest of it was there and I see that is part of it. And if I go through the rest of the box here, I might find some of the other bits too. Well, I finally got some room on my shelves set aside for this train collection to come in. And now that they're out, they look fantastic. I couldn't be happier. They, um, I mean, I collected trains at one point. My wife and I were Lionel train dealers when we had a toy store years ago. So for me, it's fun to get this stuff back in. And certainly pre-war train stuff is not easy to come by. This one set here at the top dates from 30s really good condition and everything has been tested and does work so that's a big bonus when you have an electrical set like this. Oh really good collection of items that came in today from the toy cars. Um, I got this Gene Autry cap gun set that came through. Just a really wide variety of interesting things in these boxes. So overall pretty happy that I bought the collection. Um, although there was a few expensive pieces in here I have to sell to get my money back but that's the way this uh, business goes. You take a risk, you take a gamble, you buy your inventory and I hope you have a buyer for it. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, you can check us out on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G. On Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more episodes soon. Bye for now.